and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello. Hello. Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. It's going to be a fun time. Today I am going to be talking about 10 things that nobody told me. What? 10 things nobody 10 things 10 things nobody told me about weight loss. So for those who don't know, my name is Jordan. If you're new here, welcome. Subscribe. Click the notification bell. Do it all. But yeah, for those who don't know, my name is Jordan and I lost 130 pounds last year in 2016 and since then I've basically been maintaining, although I do want to lose like kind of 15, that, that, okay, whatever, that's besides the point. I lost a lot of weight last year and I documented the entire thing on my Instagram account and now I'm just here trying to spread some knowledge, trying to help some people out, see if I can help other people lose weight, kind of like talk about my experiences and stuff like that. So if you're interested in my weight loss journey, definitely check out uh, my Instagram account, but also my other videos because I talk about how I lost weight, um, my exercise routine, I talk about it all. So just check out my other videos. But yes, back to this video, I wanted to make a video on some of the things that I did not know would occur as a result of weight loss. Um, and yeah, obviously I'm not a professional. Um, <laughs> these are just my own experiences. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to experience the same things. It doesn't mean everyone experiences the same things. It's just what I have personally experienced and what I did not expect to experience. So as usual, I have my laptop here um, just because I had to write a script because I'm not very good at, you know, talking. <laughs> to the camera so I just have all my notes here and I will be looking down every so often just to make sure I am not veering too far off the fucking track because we all know Jordan likes to fucking talk. So yes, number one and I, I didn't know if I wanted to talk about this one because I feel like a lot of people will be kind of um, disheartened to hear this and I don't want to scare anyone out of losing weight but this is the reality for a lot of people and for me. So yeah, number one fucking hair loss. So I personally lost approximately half of my hair throughout my weight loss journey. Um, so right now, like as you can probably tell, my hair is very thin and very fine. I've always had fine hair um, and my hair has never been like especially thick. It's just throughout my weight loss journey, I actually ended up losing a fuck ton of hair. And um, it is very normal. Like if you look it up, it is a common side effect of weight loss. I mean, you have to remember that like your body is in a caloric deficit for however many months you're losing weight. Um, and as it's in a caloric deficit, it's not like, it's not receiving all the nutrition it needs to maintain its current state, right? So hair loss is something that occurs, unfortunately. The good thing about it is that the hair loss is temporary. Like my hair is growing back now. It's just throughout the weight loss process, I lost a lot of hair. Number two, and that is that I am always, always, fucking cold and this one is really weird because if you knew me before I lost weight like it's just it's mind-boggling before I lost weight I could go through Canadian winter in a fucking leather jacket and I am not joking I could go in a scarf a leather jacket and gloves and I would survive to tell the tale I would go out in negative 30 degrees walk around in my leather jacket wouldn't even do it up because my leather jacket at the time didn't fit like it was too small so I couldn't even do it up um but I would like walk through winter like that. Like that is what I would wear. Now, okay, so like last fall, um, when it first started cooling down, I remember it was like 12 degrees Celsius one day and I walked outside and I was shook. Shook. Because I was freezing and like, I had never experienced that before. Because like I said, I had gone through my entire life being like immune to the cold because of how much excess weight I had on my body. So the fact that I had to experience this new phenomenon of being cold, I was, I just, I didn't know how to handle it. Now in the winter, I have to bundle up. Like I have to wear a lot of layers. When I go running in the winter, um, what I'll do is I'll wear two pairs of leggings, thick ass socks, sometimes two pairs of socks. Um, what am I doing with I'll wear two pairs of leggings, really thick socks. I will wear, um, like an Under Armour like running shirt and it's like a thermal shirt 
with a sweater on top and then with a parka on top and <laughs> I'll just wear a lot of layers and that is something I was not expecting. I mean obviously it makes sense because I have a significantly less amount of fat on my body and you know I'm obviously going to be colder but I think the fact that I lost weight made me especially cold if that makes sense because even people who I know or my friends who are very tiny or like who weigh less than me they didn't have as hard of a time with the winter as I did. So I think it also has to do with the fact that it was like a shock to my body going through winter without that excess skin, or sorry, without that excess weight on my body. It was like, no, no, no. Okay, the third thing that nobody told me about weight loss before I lost weight, and that is, this one is a really important one, I feel, and that is bloating and water retention. So before I lost weight, I didn't really understand what bloating meant because I was always bloated because I ate so poorly. Like it was just my permanent state of being was to be bloated and to retain water. And especially since I didn't weigh myself prior to weight loss, like I would have never known that I was retaining water after a binge or after eating poorly. So as I lost weight, I was kind of exposed to like this water retention thing and like this bloating thing and I just, <laughs> it was honestly really scary at first. So um, as a lot of you will probably know if you've lost a lot of weight or if you're trying to lose a lot of weight, you'll probably know because you've seen me talk about it or whatever. Um, my body retains a lot more water than the average body and that's because I lost so much weight. So I have a lot of um, like especially before I had my loose skin removed, I just had a lot of space for water to retain. I had a lot of space for water to hang out after I ate poorly. Like I just had a lot of, you know, a lot of water retention. So in the morning, and this is on a good day, so on a mo oh, sorry. <laughs> on a day when I eat really well and like I follow, you know, like my diet, like it's really like healthy. Even on those days, I will weigh like seven to nine pounds heavier at night than in the morning. And that probably has to do with the fact that I do eat high carbs, so I eat a lot of carbs, and carbs are like, you know, notorious for floating, um, especially like potatoes, bread, all the things I love. Yeah, I will weigh seven to nine pounds heavier at night, and then by the morning, after I like, you know, have my morning piss, have my morning shit, I'll be back at my normal weight. And that is something I did not know was gonna occur. So for someone losing weight in the beginning to step on the scale at night and not realize that that is something that was like occurring in my body, that was very scary because I was like, uh, uh. <laughs> but yeah, so that was something that was very, very scary and no one told me about it. And I mean, I feel like if I did research, I probably would have found out about it, but me, I did no research. I feel like I've been staring at myself. I'm sorry, I'm just trying this. Okay, I'm trying to stare at the camera. But yeah, I feel like that is something that, you know, would have been useful at least to know so I didn't have to be so shook. What is the shook count on this video? Shook is one of those words that I used to make fun of people for saying and then I started saying it in irony and now it's like a part of my vocabulary. <laughs> Okay, number four, the fourth thing that nobody told me about weight loss and I was kind of surprised to have to deal with, um, yeah, that is jealous people or some people call them sabotagers. So if you watch my other videos, you know that I was lucky in the sense that um, the sabotagers in my life were not that bad. Like, obviously there are people in my life who encourage me to like eat poorly sometimes or um, do whatever, but it was never to the extent that I felt like my goals were going to be compromised, if that makes sense. Um, and like when I say sa sabotagers, by the way, I mean people who like want you to eat poorly because they want you to not reach your goals. Like obviously I have friends who are like, come out with me, have lunch with me, blah, blah, blah. Like that's not a sabotager, but that's just my friend and they want me to eat food with them. But I'm talking about people who like literally want to see you fucking fail. And I know a lot of people deal with these people, unfortunately, and to that, I say, fuck them all. But yeah, so I didn't personally deal with sabotagers. I have dealt with really salty people, which I was thinking you're making an entire different video on this. But yeah, so that's something people did not tell me about. And that is something that a lot of you are gonna have to deal with. Um, yeah. So yeah, just that's something you should be prepared for. People not liking the fact that you're losing weight. All right, the fifth thing that nobody told me about losing weight. And that is that suddenly everyone around you is gonna become a fucking doctor and know everything about your body. 
more than you apparently so what I mean by that is the second that certain people find out that you're trying to lose weight those people think that you talking about wanting to lose weight is an open invitation for them to give you their opinion on you losing weight for example you I cannot even tell you how many people have said to me you cannot lose weight while eating potatoes and I'm like oh oh really or are you sure that you should be running that distance is bad for your knees? <laughs> or are you sure you should be doing that or this or that or that? I read in a book. I saw on Dr. Oz. I read on Wikipedia that you cannot eat bread. Bread gives you cancer. But yeah, everyone is suddenly a professional. <laughs> A weight loss coach. Everyone just becomes one and everyone wants to give you their fucking opinion when you didn't ask for it. All right, the sixth thing that nobody told me about losing weight and I feel like, I feel like this is when the video gets a bit dark. So grab a tissue because we might cry. Okay, so the sixth thing is how losing weight will not fix your insecurities and this one's this, I feel like this one is super obvious because you hear it all the time like, oh, like your insecurities come from within, like it's not completely external, uh, like you have to work on yourself. And for me, at the beginning, when but like before I started losing weight, in my mind, the only thing that was wrong with me was the fact that I was overweight. And I was like, when I lose this weight, I'm gonna be fucking perfect. I'm gonna be like fucking a goddess walking the streets of downtown Toronto, my hair blowing in the air. I'm gonna be like fucking Pocahontas. I genuinely believe that losing weight made me more confident. It made me more confident in like who I am as a person. It made me more confident in group situations. It made me more confident in approaching people. All of those things, I do believe I am more confident. Um, like yeah, in those scenarios. However, I believe I am more confident in those scenarios, not because I'm smaller, but because throughout my weight loss journey, I worked so heavily on myself and on my own self-esteem. And like the outcome of that was me being a more confident person. I don't know if that made any fucking sense. I'm hoping it does. What I'm trying to say is that by me losing weight, that was a very strong sign and a very strong indicator that I wanted to better myself. And the second I decided I wanted to better myself, that's like when I put myself first. And I believe that the strongest sign of self-love is putting yourself first. And yeah, so I genuinely, like in general, I just liked myself more because I was like, I'm making myself stronger. I am healthier. I like, I'm putting myself first and that made me a more confident person. But this ties into the idea or the concept, and I know a lot of you are gonna know exactly what I'm talking about when I say this, and that is body dysmorphia. So unfortunately, body dysmorphia is very prevalent in the weight loss community. I know a lot of people, myself included, who will lose a lot of weight, and sometimes they will look in the mirror and they will see the same person they were before they lost weight. And unfortunately, I mean, body dysmorphia is common among all groups of people, even people who are born super thin experience body dysmorphia. But something that like my weight loss journey taught me is that losing weight was not gonna fix that. And I mean, it's a bit better now, like a main source of my body dysmorphia before my um, my excess skin removal, <laughs> removal surgery was the fact that I believed I still looked fat. And like, I don't think I look fat anymore. It's just, it's, it's hard to explain. Like sometimes at night I'll look in the mirror and I'll be like, wow, what the hell? But that just ties into the fact that I'm really bloated, which I already talked about. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just something I don't think anyone could have prepared me for, regardless of what they told me. But that is something, you know, I wasn't really expecting. Like I said, I thought I was gonna wake up one day, super fucking hot, super fucking skinny, walking down the street, like, you know, Paris fucking Hilton, but no. Lesson, wait, am I doing lessons? No, seventh thing that nobody told me about losing weight. And that is, <laughs> knowing when to stop so this is something i struggle with all the time and i know a lot of people struggle with this and this is this is something that a lot of people have trouble talking about because it makes them uncomfortable or they find it embarrassing which like i agree it is pretty embarrassing to like admit this as something you experience but yeah knowing when to stop and that's like going through constant phases constant cycles of thinking you're at a goal weight into thinking you're not or thinking that you're fine the way you are and then thinking you're not. So I'll go through phases where I'm like, you know what? I don't need to lose any more weight. Like I'm healthy. I um, 
like I look fine like I go through all these things and I'm like you're fine and then literally three days later I could be like fuck this I need to lose 15 pounds I am not okay right now like I am bloated I need to look leaner I need to like you know what I mean like it goes through all the like these cycles and this cycle feels like it is fucking endless like I would be like oh it's just so hard because I will have people in my personal life, people online, on Instagram, on YouTube, who be like, you don't need to lose weight. Like, why are you trying to lose weight? Like, you're fine the way you are. And then to me, that's like, it's like, do I listen to those people or do I listen to like the voice in my head that's like, you need to lose more weight. And it's really challenging when you're coming from a morbidly obese person to a not morbidly obese person because I have never in my life before now been a normal weight. So to me, I don't know what normal is. And that is like what a lot of people experience. And it's just like, I was expecting to know when I'm done. Like, you know what I mean? I was expecting to know when I was ready to like go into maintenance. And like, I've been maintaining for over a year now, but throughout that entire maintenance process, I've gone back like hundreds of times between like, should I be maintaining or should I still be losing? And right now I'm on a losing kick. I'm like, January 1st, I'm losing 15 fucking pounds. And we'll see what I'm thinking in February, but it's a cycle. So yeah. <laughs> All right, number eight, the eighth thing that nobody told me about losing weight. And this one, I know a lot of people relate to. And this one is also embarrassing to admit, but I'm okay with embarrassing myself on the internet for everyone to see, so. And that is body checking. Fuck! So my camera is out of space, so I'm gonna have to come back in like two seconds. <laughs> One second. Okay, I'm back, sorry. Um, also sorry, I just, I've been looking at some of the footage and it's kind of dark. And my bed is a fucking mess, but. And I'm sorry if the angle's different now. <sighs> I just talk too much, so my camera's like, hurry the fuck up, let's go, come on. But okay, so like I was saying, um, body checking. So what I mean by body checking, and I don't know, like I said at the beginning, I don't wanna talk on behalf of everyone, but I know for me, oh, fuck, it's so dark. I should have had it this angle the whole time. Look how much better this is. That's a fucking mess back there, but should I like change it? Should we make a comeback for the rest of the video? Is this angle bad? Okay, whatever. This is the new angle. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Basically, what I mean by body checking is if there's a mirror, you can bet your sweet ass that Jordan is fucking looking in it. When there's a mirror, I need to make sure I look okay. Like, does that make sense? Like, it's not like I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, girl, you're fucking hot. Like, it's more like, do you look okay? And it is really fucking bad. And I, I feel like people, like, notice it all the time and it's like i just cannot help it if i'm walking by a mirror i need to look at myself in it i will walk through stores like zara for example when they have the mirrors on like the poles and the poles are like every i don't know like three meters or whatever and if i'm walking by them i will look in every single one and i know that's not normal but it's just like it's it's just what i do these days and i have a really good friend who does it as well and um, I'm kind of throwing her under the bus here. I'm not gonna say her name. And if she's watching this, she totally knows I'm talking about her. She lost a lot of weight as well. And like, even when I went with her, it's just constantly looking at yourself in the mirror. And no one told me I was gonna be like this. No one said, you know what, Jordan? From now, you know what, Jordan? From now on, you are gonna be obsessed with yourself. <laughs> All right, the ninth thing that nobody told me about losing weight and this is a big one, and I know a lot of you relate to this one, and I'm gonna have to do an entire video on this because so many people have questions about it, so many people struggle with it, um, and that is binge eating. So, before I lost weight, to the surprise of many people, I did not binge eat. I was overweight because I had a problem with overconsumption, I ate way too much, I did no exercise, but I did not binge eat, and to me, actually not just to me, it, like, it is a fact that there is a big, big difference between overconsumption and binge eating. And binge eating is not something that I struggled with before losing weight. As a result of losing weight, as a result of being in like a caloric deficit for fucking almost two years now, as a result of being restrictive on my diet, I now struggle with binge eating. And it's annoying as F, like it is so annoying. <laughs> It's a cycle, like I said, it's a fucking cycle. Sometimes I'll like go three, four weeks, like, you know, eating amazing, doing amazing, 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 killing it, killing it. Then all of a sudden it's like 
I smell chocolate and it's like something is initiated in my fucking brain and I just need to eat everything. <laughs> All right, so the final one, the 10th thing nobody told me about losing weight. We're ending on a high note. I saved the best for last. It's an optimistic one. So the 10th thing that nobody told me about losing weight, and that is how easy it's gonna be to maintain your weight if you lose weight the correct way, bitch. How easy it is to maintain your weight. How easy it is to not gain your weight back. So I feel like before I was losing weight, I would look at all of these success stories and 70% of these success stories, unfortunately resulted in these people gaining their weight back, right? So that was something I've always been terrified of. And that is something that I, I, I'm still scared, uh, afraid of, but I'm much more educated on it now. And um, I feel like I'm much more confident in my abilities to maintain my weight. So it is easy to maintain your weight loss if you lost weight in a healthy way. If you lost weight, um, yeah, if you did it the healthy way. So if you lost your weight by eating 800 calories a day, exercising three hours a day, then no, you're probably not gonna be able to maintain your weight because you cannot maintain that routine. And if you start off at like 1200 calories a day at 300 pounds, what are you gonna do when your body is smaller and you need to eat fewer calories? Like you can't eat 300 calories a day, like you know what I mean? So if you lose weight in a healthy way, if you start at a caloric, like level that you are recommended and you work your way down, it is gonna be easier for you to maintain your weight at the end after you lose the weight. Don't be too restrictive. If you're too restrictive when you're losing weight, you're gonna have a harder time maintaining that weight loss. There is a reason, people. There is a reason why, is that me? Oh. There is a reason why you have never once seen a reunion special of The Biggest Loser. There is a reason, and it's because they bring those poor people into this competition, they make their lives into fucking games for profit, and they say, yeah, you're 500 fucking pounds, I'm gonna make you eat 1,000 calories a day and work out eight hours a day, and then when you lose 300 pounds over the summer, everyone will be, whoo, but then the second you go home and you have to go to work and you have to, you know, eat a normal amount of fucking food and you don't have a personal chef anymore, you're gonna blow up, and that's what happens. Take it from me, professional Dr. Jordan, nutritionist. <laughs> I've never taken a nutrition class in my life. Okay, my camera just overheated and shut off, so we're gonna make this quick. That is the end of this video. Those are the 10 things nobody told me about uh, weight loss before I lost weight. And yeah, so thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you subscribe and hit the notification thingy and check me out on Instagram if you haven't already because let me tell you, 2018 is gonna be my YouTube year. YouTube queen, best content creator on YouTube goes to Jordan Shrinks. Subscribe. I will see you next time. Um, Probably won't see me before the holidays though, so happy fucking holidays. Bye! <laughs>